It may look like a throwback to a war of the past. Heavy artillery, armor, men sent in waves to their death. But the bloody battle for Bakhmut is, in one key way, truly remarkable. It sees the forces of a nation state pitched against a private army, the Wagner Group. Their tactics are brutal, they are deprived of any moral, and they are simply, they simply have a target, kill or get killed. The mercenary force has emerged from the shadows to lead the Russian assault in this part of Ukraine. They've taken massive casualties, but also taken ground. They are led by this man, Yevgeny Prigozhin. They call him Putin's chef. Here he is serving President George W. Bush. Now he leads a huge private army that today, he claimed, captured a town called Solidar. I want to emphasize one more time that no other units took part except Wagner. Now that is disputed, but what is not in doubt is the key role Wagner now play in this war. And it is a conflict they've been involved in from the very start. In 2014, we first heard of Wagner Group um, operating in Crimea and helping the Russian army and Russian state uh, to annex Crimea. Uh, back in 2014, Russia did not uh, say it was actually intervening in Ukraine and Donbass. Um, and for that, the, um, somebody had to do a different job for them, and that was Wagner Group and pro-Russian separatists who acted both in Crimea and Donbass uh, in the interest of the Russian state. Since then, they've expanded their operations around the world. Their tactics were honed in Syria's civil war. They also fought in Libya. But it's in sub-Saharan Africa that they have been most active, propping up regimes allegedly in return for control of mineral resources. And they used Africa as a training, as a training uh, operational ground to understand um, their capability, their uh, operational readiness uh, to, to act uh, in European soil. In Africa, they basically traded uh, security um, in exchange for some ch shares uh, on oil, um, diamonds uh, and, and critical uh, rare materials. For most of its existence, Wagner operated in the shadows. Yevgeny Prigozhin even took legal action against people who said he ran the group. Then, last year, with Russia's invasion of Ukraine struggling, that all changed. So during the invasion um, of Russia in, into the Ukraine, uh, Prigozhin had to go out of the shadow because the scale of operations was so huge, and he um, and Russia kind of broke all the ties with um, with um, the rest of the world. So they didn't need, didn't, they didn't want to, and didn't need to pretend that uh, they're um, operating in a legal framework. They opened a headquarters in St. Petersburg, putting out public statements. Prigozhin started touring Russian prisons offering pardons in exchange for participation in the war. Those recruits have reportedly died in huge numbers. Bakhmut has been called a meat grinder. It's something that those responsible for recovering fallen soldiers have seen firsthand. They don't seem to be well prepared. They are not prepared at all. They are like a mass, a human mass they send to overwhelm us. Despite that, Wagner have continued to push on Bakhmut. So why? What are they trying to achieve? The end goal is uh, obviously to, to, to secure as much territory as, as they can. And the more territory they, they, they secure in the name of Wagner, the more powerful uh, they get. His idea, his end goal is to become uh, it's become the hero, it's to become the person, it's to become the key to the conflict, the key, the solution uh, to the conflict. And with that, to have more power to negotiate his own position in the future. In the last few hours, Vladimir Putin has promoted Valery Garisimov, a man Prigozhin has clashed with in the past, to run the Russian war effort. Kremlin and Wagner power games playing out on the battlefields of Ukraine. Tens of thousands have already died, 
many more likely will.